Hi, this is a short video to talk a little bit about how to best format formal lab reports. Uh, so this is kind of the details you need to pay attention to as you go through writing a formal lab report in Chem 104 and uh, similar things should be used later on. So first off, why do we have to format uh, uh, a report in a certain way? Well, the main thing is you're trying, whenever you're writing something, it's for someone else to read. And you should be trying to convince them that you know what you're talking about and that you are analyzing the situation correctly. And therefore, they should believe and act on what you're presenting. If you present material that is sort of not following, I should say, not following standard standard uh, kind of uh, ways that, that information gets transmitted between scientists, if you have it kind of jumbled, it's really hard for them to understand it. And also, they're much, the reader is much less likely to, to believe it or kind of act on it because it doesn't seem like it's, it's, it's right. It's not looking like I, I think it like the like I think it should look. The reader says, so why should I trust this? One thing that you really need to focus on sometimes when I make comments or grade lab reports for people, they say, well, that information, you know, the information you're asking about is there if you if you sort of um, think about it long enough, you know that's not what you want to be doing. You want to have things that are easily understood by the by the person reading reading your report. You want them to easily understand things so that they will um, act on it. All right, that's why we want to format things. First off, one thing that is oftentimes a big problem for students starting off in science classes is referencing material. And we do this because we need to acknowledge the work of other people and it uh, lends support to, to your work. If you, uh, you know, if somebody says, I don't, I don't really, the person reading your paper says, I don't really know if I believe this. If they see a reference, then they can go look it up and then they can say, oh, okay, this is, this is right. The other thing is, um, so reference, you should reference things that are not common knowledge to your audience. So you don't have to reference things like molecular weights for common, uh, for common compounds, the boiling point of water. Those are things that people can find pretty easily for uh, Chem 104 uh, levels. Information that is not uh, sort of common knowledge you should reference that and you know this is uh, this is how you prove that you are using a good number by providing a reference that cites the value you're you're writing it, you've written in your report you are um, you're proving that that's the right thing so like I don't know the the uh, the the boiling point of methanol uh, right off the top of my head and I don't think a reader would so I would, I might look that up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia is really good for kind of common chemistry, physical constants. So I've, I'm fine with you using um, Wikipedia as a source. Um, also, if you have kind of complicated equations that you don't want to show all the, all the steps of how that equation was derived, you can reference a uh, a source that where the, those uh, developments are worked out so like the henderson hasselbach equation um this uh i'm making this video in reference to the peak uh pka uh, or excuse me k of a k of an indicator by spectra spectrophotometry. photometry there's this um one uh quantity you have to find called c1 over c2 and it's related to the absorbances of the acid solution, the, the indicator in acid, the indicator in base, and the indicator in a buffered solution. You don't want to have to go through and show how those absorbances are related to this C1, C2 ratio. And so that would be a really good place to reference the lab manual to show, to show um, how that calculation or how that uh, 
equation uh, is developed. I'm going to say um, for references you want to um, use a superscript number, a superscript letter, those are both alright. A number or letter in parentheses is alright. The main thing is do it the same way um, and put the reference at the end of the phrase where the knowledge is first mentioned. Usually that's at the end of a sentence, but every once in a while you'll have uh, a little bit more complicated sentence where you might have the first you know, the first part of the sentence is talking about one subject. There might be a reference at the end of that, and then the second part of the sentence is talking about something else. There might be a different reference there. Here's just a couple examples of how to do that. So I have this um, uh, uh, an equation for that you can get by uh, rearranging the ka and applying the negative logarithm, and I got a little number you know, a superscript number here that's indicating that. And then, um, you know, also in the second uh, sentence, I was referencing the PKA of phenethaline, and um, I used, uh, there's a website called Wired Chemist that has a lot of helpful chemistry stuff. So nothing complicated, but you got to have and an acknowledgement of the things that you are taking from other people or you don't know and you need to have somebody show or some evidence show that it's right. This is a just kind of a quick breakdown of the important information. This isn't uh, exhaustive. You know, there's it turns out that like for the American Chemical Society, each of their different they have a whole lot of journals, you know, sort of between 50 and 100 and they have probably 20 to 30 different ways they format the references. So we don't want to, there's not one um, kind of absolute accepted standard, but there are, there's accepted ideas. And one accepted idea is that you need to provide the authors where you got the information from. And, you know, yeah, that's about it. So like for a journal article, you have to tell the author, the journal, and then the identifying information where where exactly was that information found in the journal. Um, for a website, you want to have a title of the page that um, that helps kind of frame where what information is being provided. URL addresses don't are not uh, easily understood, and so while a URL address would tell you exactly where to find the data, it might not tell you exactly what what that website is and then you want to have a date um, because websites can change over time and so you want to say this is the day that I took that information from and um, books you again you have an author and a title it gets a little bit more complicated because there's some traditions about um, about books that you tell the publisher and the city publication um, because books tend to be really long uh, usually pages is helpful. And lab manual, um, our lab manual is a little weird in that it, uh, for Chem 104 it doesn't have a law, uh, sort of set of authors listed. It just says Department of Chemistry, UW-Whitewater. So I think this is a good format. One thing to look at is in formatting, I tend you sort of, I've done it this way where Titles are in italics. Um, information is separated by commas. The whole reference ends with a period. Sometimes there's a there's a little bit different. In books, it's just traditional that the publisher and the city that is published in are separated by a colon. Usually, I tend to use um, semicolons between authors when you have more than one author, because otherwise you sort of get lots of uh, lots of commas. So you have last name, comma, first initial, and then you would have another comma, and then the, so on. So, but I'm not real, I think in general we aren't really picky about this. We want you to, we want you to do this and sort of, and, and get, start getting used to it. The next thing I'm going to tell you about is just, is tables, um, because I see, some problems with people when they first when they start writing lab manuals or excuse me lab, formal lab reports and the tables get so tables are great ways to summarize data 
if you ever are realize think I'm writing, you're writing a sentence and you realize I'm just typing a whole bunch of numbers in in succession as like you know the the density of the samples were 0 0.293, 0 0.565, blah, 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 blah. If you're just doing something like that, that probably it's a lot better served if you put that information in a table because it's really hard for a reader to look at all those numbers individually and then maybe sometimes people give a list of densities and then they'll say four uh, samples A, A2, A3, and it just gets really hard to, to match up the density and the sample identifier. A table does that a whole lot more easily because it presents that information visually and um, in a clear way. So one thing to watch out for is when you insert a table in Word, it it, it is by default the width of the paper that you're using, and that is sometimes not necessary. And so you want to make sure that you format the table so that it looks kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, sort of easy to read. You want to label columns with a property name, not by their units. This is also this also comes up in graphs a lot. So if you're plotting um, volume of sodium hydroxide and uh, and pH, you don't label the column milliliters sodium hydroxide. It's milliliters is a is a unit. It's not a property. The property is volume. Just like you don't talk about something in terms of grams. It's an is not a label for a property. That's a, a unit. So um, you might kind of I think we sort of have a feeling for this. Like usually you don't go around and say the grams of the sample were it, it's a little bit more formal to say the mass of the sample was. Um, so you need to be careful with that. Here I was just showing you a bad table and a good table. Um, bad table, it's, uh, it's too big. I don't use properties. I use units to label the columns. I've kind of decided for some weird reason to left justify all the information, which... Um, leaves all this empty white space. You know, left justifying is fine, but it's just kind of weird here. I like the table in the lower right a lot better. Equations. So presenting equations clearly is really helpful. Don't try to type them in the middle of a in the middle of text. Um, that sort of um, it makes it really, you can do that, and it might be, I should say, it's probably acceptable for some very simple things, like density, where you can just say rho is equal to m slash uh, v. That's, that's not too complicated. But if you start to get any sort of a complicated equation, you want to present it in a clear way using um, an equation editor. In Word, if you go to Insert, uh, at the far right you'll see something that says symbol and usually under that there's an equations that is really helpful uh, google docs i haven't used as much but it also has an equation uh, insert tool use those um, also put the equation on a separate line all by itself center justify it give a little white space before and after those help make the make the equation easy to understand these are some details uh, I took from a from from a, a a friend of mine who teaches at a school uh, out east, and the you know I was I was sort of agreeing with those. Or uh, there's um you can look at these. One big one is cap chemical names. Chemical names are not proper names, so you don't. This happens in lab manuals sometimes because the chemical name becomes like the uh, like a a a, uh, a title on in a table, and there it's not quite exactly the same as you know titles are often capitalized. You, things we capitalize tend to be proper names, the first letter of a sentence, titles in um, in various places, and so sometimes you'll see chemical names. 
capitalized because they are acting as a title. But in text, they are not proper names, and unless they're at the beginning of a sentence, they should not be capitalized. And you would never go sodium chloride at the beginning with both capitalized. If this was at the beginning of a sentence, it would just be sodium would be capitalized and chloride would be lowercase. Um, so look through these. Use subscripts and superscripts. This is a small one, but you know it. It is a different. There is an, a there's a symbol for the multiplication sign in in your word processor. So you don't want to use the the small x. You don't want to use the asterisk. It's nice to use the 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 multiplication sign. And if you go to in Word, if you go to insert uh, symbol, you'll be able to see it. All right, that's all I got for um, kind of formatting your formal lab report. Please, uh, please try to make it look good. Thanks.